Hey, Daniel, your barn door is open. <laughs> my, my barn door is open. <laughs> Luckily, not what uh, I think you're referring to there. So this time we're going to talk about a Fresnel. You know, we've talked about ellipsoidals, we've talked about pars. Um, the thing that makes a Fresnel a Fresnel, um, you know, besides we have barn doors on the front, because you can still use barn doors with a par. So that doesn't necessarily make a Fresnel a Fresnel. Although Fresnels are where we tend to see barn doors used the most, in which you know, barn doors are, are literally this, where it gives you the ability to close off a soft light a little bit, but it doesn't give you the controllability of the shutters in an ellipsoidal. So okay. it's not as precise exactly. as a shutter would be. It's more of just a general shaping. Yeah, it can help a little bit. It can uh, you know, cut off some of the spill, spill but it's not going to be able to give you a hard edge cut like you can with a ellipsoidal. Okay. What makes a Fresnel actually a Fresnel, though, is two main things. First is the lens. So you guys have probably seen something like that in a, mm -hmm. in a lighthouse before. A Fresnel lens is, you know, the, the name comes from the lens itself. This is a Fresnel lens um, used in a lot of different applications besides theatrical lighting, but definitely used a lot in theatrical lighting too. Was that named after the guy who made it, probably? I believe so, but yeah. you know, I'm one of those people that I don't necessarily care how it works as long as it works. So yeah. I'll go study, I should probably go study the history on it. My uh, college lighting professor's you know, rolling over if he ever watches this video. Right. <laughs> so uh, first thing is a Fresnel lens. The second thing, and we can't uh, open this one up to look at it, do you notice the knob here on the back that I can twist? Yeah. What that does is the bulb in this one is on a small track inside. And as I turn uh, that knob, the bulb is moving back and forth, changing the focal position between the reflector in the back and the lens. What we would see in the real world is the uh, pool of light getting narrower or wider as we go. So it's almost like a zoom feature. Exactly. But it's controlled manually. You're physically moving it's the light It's as analog as it. it gets. Exactly. Yeah. And there are LED versions of uh, Fresnel's out that do this exact same thing where you have an LED source in there moving back and forth between the reflector and they definitely all still have uh, a Fresnel lens. There are some other fixtures out that still use the name Fresnel but lack these features which make them not Fresnel. So I see these a lot on movie sets, mm -hmm. see them a lot in uh, live television studios. Yep. As small as this, I don't know if I've seen one smaller but I've seen stuff that looks like this that's really big like Oh, really big. I believe this is a 650 watt for now, you know. Yep. So this is an Aerie 650 plus. Um, they make them all the way down to 100 watt versions. Okay. All the way up to 20K version or 20,000 watt versions. Wow. You know, in live environments, we don't tend to use anything over a 1000 watt for now very commonly. Actually, I take that back. We do use some 2000 watt ones commonly. As you start getting into more of the 5000 watt and up, that's something that you see on movie sets uh, a lot more than you see it in live event environments. Although it is used on occasion. We were in a TV studio a few weeks ago, and the whole grid above the audience and above the filming area was just covered with these kind of lights just clamped everywhere. I oh, mean, yeah. it was like, it was a sea of those fixtures. Exactly. So kind of talking about usage a little bit, I mentioned how I love using ellipsoidals for front light. That's mainly because most of the environments we do front light in are a church or something of that nature where the controllability of the light is very important. When you're less worried about control and you're more about worried about just getting a nice soft edge and an even field of light, uh, Fresnels sometimes work better. Where I like using them is if we're in a really small space where um, you know, my, my lamp sources may be 10, 12, 15 feet from the subject, it's definitely a lot easier to get a nice smooth wash out of a Fresnel than it is out of a Lipsoidal. Uh, just because of how soft the light already is, it makes blending them together uh, a great deal easier. I also use these a lot for backlight on people because again, okay. it gives a nice soft edge, especially if you're using a um, the, the softness of the light. And what I mean by that is the not just the way it looks around the edge, the softness of, of a light is, is the way it's gonna look when I shoot on you. So if I shoot a spotlight on you, I'm gonna see a very hard cut of shadow. You know, yeah. I'm even looking at you now, I can see a little bit from your, uh, from your sweatshirt just from the lights in the room here. That's because um, whatever's hitting you at the moment is creating that, that sharp edge shadow. Yeah. The larger the face of the light source, the softer the shadows are going to be on the person you're hitting. Interesting. That's why often in a, in a TV shoot environment, you'll see a giant sheet of diffusion a few feet in front of a Fresnel like this. That's because that, uh, that diffusion sheet is now becoming the light source, its source itself by a fixture like this. So trying to make it, it even softer. Even softer. So that's where you're going to get into true soft light and really getting away from a lot of those shadows. In live event environments, we don't have the opportunity to use giant sheets of diffusion like that. That's where using Fresnels, even um, even if you don't need the output, sometimes using a Fresnel with a larger face yeah. still helps soften that light and decrease some of those neck shadows you see on people. Okay, curveball. So oh. on film sets, when I see these big boxes, mm -hmm. there's a light in the back and it's like a big fabric cone. 
Yeah. Like is a, that a Fresnel in the back and then the lens is doing, or the paper in the front is doing what you're talking about? You know, someone's going to crucify me in the comments on this one, but uh, I believe that's uh, what you're referring to is a Chimera. Um, and usually that is what's called an open face fixture, which is not one we're going to talk about here okay. necessarily, because at that point, you just want as much light out of the lamp source as possible, and you don't need it going through lenses or anything that's going to decrease the amount of light you have. At that point, that giant box in the front is what becomes the lens, but that's why it's, you do it that way, is you're trying to get a very large source to be able to get a very soft light on your uh, on your whoever your subject is. Okay, cool. Makes sense. 